Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 188, recorded Monday, February 9th, 2015. Ryan Hoover of Product Hunt. Triangulation is brought to you by Ring Central, the business phone system that's in the cloud. Ring Central now integrates with Google for Work. Try Ring Central with a 30 day risk free trial. Visit ringcentral.com or call 800 543 9980 and use the promo code TWIT. And by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. Lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash triangulation. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash triangulation. And by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can grow and protect your wealth. And best of all, it's free. And for a limited time, Twit viewers could qualify for up to $10,000 on any new account. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation, the show where we talk about technology with some of the most interesting, smartest people in the business. And I'm really excited to bring Ryan Hoover on. This is Ryan is a wunderkind. How do you like that, Ryan? I, I'm not sure what that means, <laughs> but I hope it's good. <laughs> He's the creator of the hottest thing in Silicon Valley today, Product Hunt at producthunt.com. 28 years old, and he's on top of the world. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, life is fun. I'm, I'm having a good time, learning a lot. It's kind of um, not what you expected, I would imagine. No, not at all. Not at all. So uh, we were talking before the show, you were a, a business student in, in Oregon. Are you a duck? I am, yes. 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 And then uh, came to San Francisco to work in a startup, yep. Play, Play Haven. That's right. Uh, and what were you, you were doing biz dev for them or what were you doing for them? Sales? I was actually doing product, product management. Okay. So I joined, yeah, as number 10 or so. And then we grew to about 100 people or so before I left. Yeah. When did you get the idea for Product Hunt and how did that happen? Yeah. So it actually started, this is a little bit over a year ago. Um, you know, I like talking about products and oftentimes my conversations with friends are around like what apps are you playing with? Did you see that, that cool new app yesterday? Yeah. Those kind of type of things. And so I, I really wanted to build something online where I could curate and share different cool products with friends. And so it started off as an email list and um, went from there and got some traction and, and realized that people, in fact, do love sharing uh, technology products, which uh, shouldn't be too surprising. <laughs> and then there's voting. So the stuff that rises to the top of Product Hunt is the stuff that it's kind of like, in fact, it's, I wonder if you were inspired by Dig. It's kind of like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we took the email list and translated it to an actual community, an actual site, we looked at Dig, we looked at Reddit and, uh, and Hacker News and other similar sites, other communities, and we just took inspiration from what they've done. You know, we didn't want to create something entirely new that people would have to try to learn to understand. And people in the technology world understand upvoting, they understand this type of curation, and we simply just built something quick and quick and dirty, and uh, it, it worked. It does work. Actually, Alexis Ohanian's uh, it's an advisor, right? I mean, uh, an investor, yeah, investor, yeah, even mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Advisor and investor. Yeah, he's awesome. He uh, he helped us a lot during YC in the last batch and then invested in our Series A. Oh, so you were a Y Combinator uh, alum. Yes. Yep. Interesting. And that was, you'd already started the newsletter and you said, hey, I have this idea. And you, uh, y so a couple of, I should define terms. Alexis Ohanian, who's been on this yeah. show, founder of Reddit. Uh, great guy. Really inspiring, interesting guy. Y Combinator yeah. is one of the best and certainly one of the best known and earliest uh, startup schools where you 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 get a little funding from them, but you also learn how to take your idea to product. Mm -hmm. Were they very, very valuable for you? Absolutely. You know, it's um, going back to the email list and and everything. We we had some traction going into Y Combinator when I applied. I actually met uh, Alexis, Kevin Hale, Cat, and some other partners before I even applied, and and they they saw the value in Product Hunt and they saw the traction and. If it wasn't for the traction itself at that moment, they probably wouldn't have accepted us into Y Combinator because it's one of those things where you're like, okay, we're going to build this site where people are going to upvote cool products and it's going to it's going to be great. Like, it's not an idea that really immediately comes to mind as something that will actually work. 
Um, but at the time, it had some traction, and they immediately understood where the opportunity was. And um, but yeah, getting to your question, Y Combinator is awesome. It's it was a great experience, three months long. Uh, learned a lot, built a lot of really good relationships. And now that it's over, it's not it's not over, and that I still have access to the partners and office hours and and the alumni itself. And I, you know, I think probably a lot of the people watching have not heard of Product Hunt yet, but um, but so. It's one of those viral sensations that's just kind of swept uh, Silicon Valley. Um, and when, when you, you have advocates, I mean, we, there's somebody in our office who every day says, hey, I found something great on Product Hunt. I mean, they become <laughs> addicted to Product Hunt. They just can't stop reading. Do you still do the, news, the uh, email at all? Or? Yeah, every morning I'm, I'm doing the email myself. And so that's part of the design of Product Hunt. It started off as an email list, but really... The core experience and one of the reasons why it works is this daily email that we send out. And each day it shows the previous day's top 10 products based on upvotes. So it's an easy way for people to consume and understand what's what's cool, and what's hot in the technology space. Um, but we also add some other things like some editorial content or featuring certain collections of products like um, you know on-demand delivery services or uh, wow. emoji products or your favorite GIF apps, those types of things. Um, so the email is a big part of it, and also the design of the site is encouraged to build this daily habit. That's one of the reasons why we split things by day. It's intended to give you kind of this daily uh, yeah, routine. Yeah, smart. And, uh, yeah. I'm sure, Jeff, you get up every morning, first thing you do is check. Yeah, he says, yeah, first thing I do is check product on. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I love hearing that. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, you know, one of the problems Dig had was people started gaming it, and I'm sure this is something you've got to deal with. In fact, I notice that the number one item today is is probably something you wouldn't want to be the number one item, which is the Product Hunt Manual, a step-by-step -step guide and workbook for a successful Product Hunt launch. Uh, and that's, so does that start to, do you, do you pay attention to that? Does that start to worry you? Do you start to think about that? Yeah, we've had people gaming it for a, a while, a long time. And it's a, it's a great sign. It's, you know, it's going to happen. And We've since the very beginning, we've added a lot of uh, automated and manual things to, yeah. to curb that. So you know, we have voting, voting redetection. We have the ability to detect spam bots. Um, we do sandboxing, a lot of other things to protect um, against people gaming the system. And it's something that we'll continually have to deal with. Uh, fortunately, we you know having Alexis and some support yeah, from some, Reddit, getting some of their advice is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and also like Hacker News, I talked to Daniel who does moderation at Hacker News and he gave a lot of really good feedback oh, good. and advice on how to deal with that. They have the same so, issue. Yeah, and I'm exactly. sure. Have you talked to Kevin Rose? Because I'm sure he has some stories to tell also. <laughs> yeah, so Kevin Rose, uh, Google Ventures invested in our seed, ah, seed round so and uh, were... Kevin Rose has helped a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Advising and other things. I love the logo, the cat in the, in the Google Glass. You know, that's, um, you can kind of see the little poster back here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was actually made by someone in the community, which is the coolest part about it. Yep. It wasn't yep. like we sat down and thought, like, okay, what well, would be a cool mascot? But um, <laughs> we just, it kind of happened and people like it. <laughs> so. well, how could you not like it? It's awesome. You got yeah, cats fun. and you got Google Glass. It says it all, really. People love cats and people love the internet. So it's, I think, just made to be. <laughs> We're talking to Ryan Hoover, who just got uh, a seven, you got seven, what, seven million dollar investment? What did you just get? Uh, through both rounds of seed and series A, 7.1 million is how much Total. we raise. Yeah. And um, I want to talk a little bit about that, that process, because I'm fascinated by that and how that's changed how you do what you do. I imagine it's put some pressure on. Um, it's kind of a great story where you, you just out of nowhere, boom, something becomes hot. It's about virality, I guess, in some ways. Uh, product Hunt is the, uh, is the product at producthunt.com. Ryan Hoover's our guest. If you have questions for Ryan in the chat room, I can uh, take those too. Uh, and you know how to get there, irc.twit.tv. Our show today brought to you by Ring Central, the best darn phone system you could get that's not from the phone company. And that's, frankly, <laughs> a big part of why we like it. When we moved to our new studios, I was given the bad news. Now you're a real business. you got to have a phone system. So you mean the employees can't use their cell phones anymore? No, they can, but you got to pay for it. That's when we talked about and found out about Ring Central. We we wanted something that was in the cloud, something that eliminated the idea of this big PBX in the basement. And I did not want to deal with AT and T, frankly. But Ring Central is so much better because it's in the cloud. You configure it with a web browser, so it's so easy to customize. They have mobile apps, of course they do, and things like you know you can have a, a kind of traditional business phone on your desk as you would expect. 
or we have a we have a, you know polycom conference phone in the conference room so it really feels like a regular business system but it but it's modern so you can use your for instance your smartphone in the ring central app to place calls from your business phone to text from your business phone all your calls are are encrypted with secure voice which is kind of really reassuring in these in these times you don't lose your number you can keep your existing numbers you can use toll free numbers we do when you call our toll free number at twit you get a great directory tree uh, all of which we can configure easily we get a new employee we give them a ring central phone they plug it in they're good to go customer support free 24 7 no setup fee no activation fee it's as little as 25 dollars per month per user and Ring Central just announced Ring Central for Google, which really excites me because we are a Google shop. You know, we we use Google Apps and Google for Work. Now you can integrate your Google for Work accounts with Ring Central, so you have a seamless communication hub that does things like this. is so awesome. Uh, I can use the dial pad on my screen to make calls from my Gmail account. In fact, I can click any number on the screen in Gmail. Just click the number, or in a contact list, or in the in the Google Calendar, and it places a call. I can listen to voicemails directly within Gmail. I can fax from Google Drive. I can view text messages. It really, the workflow is incredible. I love this. Ring Central. You also get things like uh, video conferencing, uh, faxing, everything you need. It's all in one place. Uh, high def video meetings. We, we, we just love Ring Central. I want you to try it. Now, as I said, $25 a month per user with no startup or setup fees. But you can activate right now with a 30 day risk free trial that includes. For every desk phone you buy, a second phone free up to a total of 20 phones. This is a great deal. Visit ringcentral.com, 30 days free. Those free phones, call 800-543-9980. Just use the promo code TWIT, 800-543-9980, or the promo code TWIT at ringcentral.com. It really is the modern world That's a to your phone system. Ryan Hoover is our guest. Young guy created a startup that's all the rage in Silicon Valley. That's pretty exciting. When you uh, so when you go to Y Combinator, I mean the idea is we're going to we're going to create a startup and we're going to get funding and we're going to build something big, right? That's the idea. Yeah, just like many investors, uh, Y Combinator is looking for people with big ideas, ideas that can grow to become very impactful and also like big companies. Um, so yeah, we we joined when there was traction and most companies that join product hunt, they or sorry, uh, Y Combinator, they they already have a product out there in most cases. So it's usually not just an idea, but they actually have something going and something working in most cases. Do you feel pressure though now that you've taken money from so more than seven million dollars, and uh, do you feel pressure to 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 go to move faster, to grow faster? Absolutely. I, it, so in the beginning, you know, it was an experiment. It was a side project. It was something that I was debating whether we would just turn it into a bootstrap business and, and make some good money while doing something fun. And now that we've taken money, of course, we have a lot of people that are relying on us to one, uh, you know, succeed, uh, but also give them a return on their money. Like frankly, investors, uh, they invest in things that one, they they believe in, but also they they are also people that need to make money for their LPs. Um, so there's a lot of pressure, certainly. Um, one of the reasons why we did raise a Series A, though, with with some really good investors is just because we can, we do have a long runway now where we can focus on building a, a product and a team and and we don't have to rush to to take short-term uh, gains, you know, really focusing on the long-term with Product Hunt right now. That seems to be the, the way to go, right, is to build a, build a business, build a community, and worry about monetization later. And yet, when you take invest investment money, I mean, always the the idea is there's got to be monetization somehow, either by an exit where you sell to somebody, right. or by or by making money by somehow advertising or something. So that puts yeah. a little bit of pressure. It gives you runway, but it also gives you there's an end. Now at the end of the runway, there's an end too. You can't just kind of oh we got oh no yeah <laughs> it's not like we have yeah forever forever um, it doesn't yeah. change our intensity or our, our traction but it it does change our focus and gives us more time to not focus on fundraising but really focus on the product um that's that's one of the things that i think some people don't realize is how much focus and energy it takes to raise money even when it's right. um uh, let's just say more relatively easy it's still a huge huge distraction and thankfully i don't have to deal with that that distraction for a little a while <laughs> right do you have a co-founder? Is it just you? Um, so it started off as, again, a side product with my buddy Nathan Bashaw. He built the first version of it uh, as over Thanksgiving. He's actually. the developer guy and you're kind of the idea guy. Is that how it works? Or? 
Um, well, he so he worked on it in the beginning with me after I had the email going, and right. he decided to move to New York and, and focus full time on his job. And since then, I, I had a part time developer uh, right when I was applying at YC, helping out, but it was just me and him at the time. Um, and then since then, we built a team of fourteen people. Wow, and grown it um, significantly. So what is so? I mean, on the surface, it looks pretty simple. It's just a list, and people voted up or down. Um, you you mm -hmm. create an account by logging in with your Twitter account. Um, what is the? What is, there's got to be secret sauce in here that that, that people are looking at, saying uh, this is a recommendation engine or what? What is what is the secret sauce? Yeah, I I love it. Um, so one of the first comments that was on Hacker News when we announced our seed round and announced our Y Combinator uh, entry was, "How is this even a business?" And there were many <laughs> other comments. It, it's delightful, and I've screenshotted it, and I'm saving it for later. Um, <laughs> I'll show you how it's a business. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's great to see that. I mean, the, some of the best ideas oftentimes have, you know, their haters and the people that are are um, skeptical. And product hunt is very simple in on the exterior. When you look at it, it's like a list of links, exactly like you described. Right. But yeah. at its core, what why it's valuable is the community and the people that use it. And over time, it's becoming more and more valuable as well as we start having more products on there, more makers on there. We re recently released related products so that when a new product launches, we now can highlight and show other products similar to that product. And so there's this interesting data play and, and, and kind of platform play that's emerging. Um, and it's very subtle. It may not be obvious to many people, but as product hunt grows, it becomes extremely valuable in the ecosystem and also the things that we can do with it later on down the road. A plat platform's a magic word. Everybody wants to hear that. Oh, it's a platform. I'm looking at my activity. Chris Messina seems to like you a lot. <laughs> he likes product hunt. He, he's <laughs> he on there every day. It's like a hundred products. And then Ver, I see yeah. Veronica Belmont. These are all people that I are my friends, so they show up in my activity stream. Obviously, there'd be other people as well. Uh, I see Kevin Rose, Dave McClure. Uh, you know, you're getting some really good people in here. Rick Clow, who are posting. And these are all new products. Uh, Chris C uh, Steven Sanofsky, who is, I know, an investor. Uh, for, you know, of fa formerly of Microsoft, you got some. You've got some big players in here, uh, posting stuff and participating. But Chris blows me away. Chris it seems like he posts something five things a day. Yeah, he's posting. I think almost daily. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Snoop Dogg. But see, now this is what happens too: is that you're going to get p people posting their own product. But I, you don't mind that, right? You know, the, we have a combination of people posting their own products and also posting cool things they find. Right. You know, as long as ultimately what we need to do is surface things that people find interesting or useful. And whether it's posted by the person that made it or not doesn't really matter. Right. And so that's totally fine with us. And Neil Dash. I mean, all of my friends are obviously hooked on Product Hunt. They're very, they're very active in there. I love it. Uh, and, and, and I would guess the most important thing is to get people voting. You know the well. If you there's a number of things that are important to us. Like part of it is is voting, part of it's commenting, some of it's posting. Ultimately, if if we if we were to measure our success, we we choose our single metric is how much traffic are we driving to these products. Right. That's kind of our our core metric, and that right. that gives us an indication of how much impact we're having in the ecosystem, how many potential users we're driving to these products. So you'll hear and, from uh, the the product uh, you know guy saying, "Wow, I just got a thousand hits from Product Hunt." Exactly. Yeah, we we measure that, of course, internally. But then having a lot of the founders and makers post blogs about their experience and the traffic yeah. they received is yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really good to read. I I I I think you know it's funny because you, it's a deeper product than it seems at first. You go there and you see the list, and I think a lot of times when you first start using it, as I did, you just click the link, you go through the links, and look mm -hmm. at them. But it's it's kind of valuable then to click, and this is a slow one because it's got fifty nine comments on the number one. <laughs> But yeah, we're we're working on some uh, <laughs> caching and some speed improvements. Wow, <laughs> that could be us yeah. too. We have our networks are not the uh, fastest in the world in here. Yeah, it shouldn't be taking that long. That's uh, ridiculous. Here, let's try this one. Vulture assembly. Yeah, there you go. And but this is kind of deep. There's a lot here because you've got the commenting, you've got who upvoted it, you've got mm -hmm. a, you know, a lot of additional information about it, which I find uh, uh, really valuable. Um, mm -hmm. You can collect to your own collections if you wish. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess this is, if 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 you were gonna if you wanted to, a roadmap for a great app, it would be, kind of this simple at first, obvious how to use it and what it is, 
and then as you explore it deeper and deeper. Yeah, you know, in I'll, I'll highlight a couple things. Um, well, one is you, you notice that M next to Adrian there in that post. He's one of the makers, one of the people behind this product. And you're having a dialogue and, with him, which is incredible. Exactly. So the, the one of the key differences between Product Hunt and maybe finding and reading about new products on tech blogs or in other, other platforms is we very often have the makers in the conversation answering questions. And so there's this dialogue between consumers and the people that made the actual thing directly, which you don't see elsewhere. And it's fun to have that conversation with the 17-year-old the kid in like the Midwest who hacked on a cool project. And, and also people like Anil Dash at one point was answering questions about ThinkUp. That's and um, That's it's nice. good to have that diversity of conversation. Cisco is my dog in the chat room says, I'm going to paraphrase you a little bit, Cisco, because I think I know where you're going here. He, he says, is there a community in San Francisco you interact with as opposed to the greater outside world? And I, I think maybe one of the questions is, isn't this a kind of a the San Francisco bubble, uh, uh, you know, the the tech or the Silicon Valley bubble talking to itself? You know, okay, so I love, I'm glad he brought that up. Um, so about 4% of our audience is in the Bay Area. What? The rest is outside. Okay, see, there yeah. you go. So there's that, um, about half of the audience is outside the U.S. So we're actually very global in terms of the audience that we're attracting. And actually, if you can pull up, go to maphunt.me okay. if you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a, a hack that somebody in the community created. Because you have an API, things. which I love. Yes, yeah, I he created that. this with our API. And what he's doing is he's cross-referencing cross all of the products that were on Product Hunt and cross-referencing their Twitter location to find out where that maker actually created yeah, that product from. Look at this. They're all over the and, world. And you can see, yeah, you see these, these aggregations of like products emerging in different mm -hmm. tech hubs, whether it's in like Vancouver, Berlin, mm -hmm. um, Amsterdam. You can double click to zoom into and get even more granular. Um, Look at this. But but yeah, it's it's really it's all over the world, and you know you see a lot of products in from San Francisco and New York and so on. Um, but there's a lot of creation happening around the world, and it's kind of magnified and, and um, emphasized with something like this. Did you do the API from from the very beginning? Because I think that's an interesting idea. You know, it's a lot of what we've done in general has been reaction to how people have used Product Hunt mm -hmm. and. Early on, people were scraping our site. I, I saw it in the real time. Google Analytics traffic like spikes would happen. They were scraping the site. They were building hacks and products on top of it. And this was before we had our API. So we, I nervously, uh, I was debating whether we should do this or not. Like, do we open up an API? It right. kind of makes me nervous because you don't know what people would do. Right. But ultimately, we decided this is the right direction, and we built it. And now people have built, I don't know, dozens and dozens of apps from like Android apps, which we don't actually have an Android app right now, to things like MapHunt. Do you find mobile is important? Uh, do you get a lot of the traffic from iOS? You know, right now we, we're not focused very much on mobile. We do have a mobile app and we're improving it. But for now, we're, we're learning and building out the web experience primarily. Right. And um, But long term, I see mobile actually as being our primary <laughs> interface um, in the next year. Somebody's written product, product Tind, which is Tinder. Yes. Tinder for pro for product. <laughs> you swipe left, yes. and swipe right. <laughs> yes. That's a mobile app, by the way. <laughs> that that came out before our mobile app, which is <laughs> hilarious. Well, you know, it's I'm, the one of the reasons I'm interested is because uh, uh, obviously everybody's saying mobile's the next big thing, right? And I feel like websites, you know, which were the thing for so long, uh, are becoming less and less important. So it's really interesting for me to see a, a web-based product that almost seems old school uh, mm -hmm. nowadays, right? And everybody's, you know, most people would start with mobile, would start with mobile. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you? Yeah. Part of it, well, part of it was just the limited resources. And again, going back to the beginning, it was me and, and my buddy Nathan right. on the side. You did what you working knew. Working on it. Yeah. Exactly. He's he, he knows Ruby. He built it in like five days. It's Rails? Uh, Is it based on Rails? Yeah. 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 And so that was, and also the content that we have is actually more tailored to to a web experience on the desktop, just because, you know, some of these products are not mobile optimized. They're like landing pages that are made for full screens. Right. So the content right now is for the desktop experience. Longer term, as we expand to like different verticals, you can you can imagine a really cool mobile experience tailored for that type of uh, interface. Well, we, you know, we've been kind of facing the same thing. And I've talked a little bit about this. Uh, we've had a website for all 10 years and 10 years ago that's what you know if you're a podcast basically you had a website and then you hoped that somebody would subscribe to you on itunes 
And mm -hmm. then from then would just uh, continue to download it on iTunes and sync it up to their iPod. And that's so dramatically changed over the last few years. Almost, you know, we went from 95% iTunes listenership and every month it goes down another few percentage points because people are mostly listening on mobile. And, and it makes me wonder, do we do a website? So what we decided to do, and I'm very, actually very excited and intrigued by this, is to do, a, 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 first to do an API and then the website is just one uh, consumer of the API. And, then, and so I think an API is a very interesting mm. idea. And of course, that's what takes you to platform, isn't it? Yeah, the, there's a lot of opportunities there. It's also one of those things that you just put it out there and see what happens. Yeah. And you you have a perfect audience for this. I mean, you have a technology uh, enthusiast audience. But you do too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so for, for people like us, building an API is a big opportunity. I just look at, I mean, so so if you go to the API page at ProductHunt.com and then you can see the things people have built, which, by the way, are also ranked by votes, um, There's the variety is very, very interesting. There's a ton of stuff. And this is people scratching their own inch, you know. I mean, Product Hunt for Alfred, if you're an Alfred user, you're going to go, wow, that's fantastic. The rest mm -hmm. of the world's going to go, what the hell? I don't understand what that is. <laughs> Uh, map hunt is immediately grokkable, but maybe something you'd visit once in a while. Um, mm -hmm. It's really intriguing. The the number one is is called one, and this actually puts product hunt in your Mac menu bar. Talk about an addict! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it actually also it doesn't just put product hunt; it also puts uh, um, Reddit and some other things up there. But that is mm -hmm. this is nice. I like this one app to read them all for Mac for Android and for iOS. So you don't need to do apps. Let them do it. You know, and we've debated, actually, early on before we decided to raise money and, and go this direction, I was debating, do do I just make Product Hunt open source and do oh. I just kind of build it out from the community itself? And oh. um, there's a lot of interesting opportunities there. It's also very challenging and risky um, from a long-term perspective. How do you maintain control and how do you build in the right vision? But all of uh, this is, isn't it? I mean, all of this... you. You must feel like you're walking on a tightrope the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, though. I mean, uh, there's a certain kind of person. Are you that kind of person? It's a certain kind of person. They say, you know, you got to be crazy to be an entrepreneur to, to do a startup. Uh, you know, I'm actually somewhat risk-averse, which is ironic. Mm. Uh, I'm slightly risk-averse. However, I love entrepreneurship. And um, also, what I'm doing, it, it, yes, product time, and many startups uh, may fail, and that's kind of expected in the startup world. At the same time, I don't, I can't really lose if that makes sense. I'm still doing something I love. I'm learning a ton. I believe we're making a good impact. We're doing right things, and so no matter what happens long term, I think that there's no failure uh, for product owner for myself. If that makes sense. No, that's I think the entrepreneur mindset. I can't fail, even when I fail. I can't. I learn. I can't fail. You're. You're. But. But that. That's like I said. That's crazy. So. <laughs> Maybe I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're the perfect guy to be. Uh, to be doing this. We're talking with Ryan Hoover about Product Hunt. More of your questions to come. And actually, Ryan does a podcast, which I think is very interesting. It's part of your blog. It's a, what Product Hunt Radio. You call that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really fun. We've had Kevin Rose actually, as, as you know very well. Uh, Brandon Mulligan. Um, we had. Alexis O'Hanian on there, Fun. a bunch of other cool people. So you know, you gotta watch out. This stuff can become addictive. You might just say, "Forget the product hunt. I want to be a podcaster." You know, I've been, as I mentioned <laughs> earlier, I've been watching your show forever, and I listen to tons of podcasts. And I always wanted an excuse to do a podcast. And now I'm like, all right, here it is. Let's, I got one. Let's just got do one. this. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, it's fun, isn't it? I just it downloaded, is. by the way, and installed one because I think that's a great <laughs> product Perfect. hunt. Is a very it's it's addictive. I gotta warn you, folks. You know, you start you you'll find. But what's what it, I love about it is that we are in this amazing creative ferment. I mean, we are in uh, it's uh, the Cambrian explosion of technology right now because the cost of entry to creating an app to making something is so low that and there's so many kids who've grown up with this stuff who say come out of school and say I'm gonna do something. That this is the, t the you need product hunt. There couldn't be a better time for product hunt. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when uh, the Mac first came out. I, there was a Mac store in San Francisco, and his claim to fame was, "I have every piece of Mac software ever made in this store," and he could do that. Be be but now, you know, I have every app. No, 
Product Hunt. ProductHunt.com. We'll have more in, in just a second. Maybe you'd like to get into this. Maybe you'd like to learn how to write software. How about Lynda.com? A great place to get your feet wet in a whole bunch of different areas, whether you want to polish up your skills for your current job or maybe get some skills for a new job. Here we are in 2050. It's already February. How did that happen? Time to invest in yourself this year and uh, learn something new with a free 10-day trial to Lynda.com. Lynda, L-Y-N-D-A.com. Uh, we had Linda Wyman on the screensavers. She's been one of the best educators in uh, in the technology field for more than a decade. Now 4,500 courses on Linda, including web development. Yes, that was her original scope. But now photography. Some of my favorite and best photographers and best friends are teachers on Linda.com. Photoshop, too. you got that great Burt Monroy stuff. Visual design, business Software training too, Excel. You need to learn be get better Excel for work. This is the place to do it. WordPress, Photoshop. Ask your uh, boss. Ask your HR representative. Many companies, including ours, have Lynda.com subscriptions for employees because it's it's worth it. All the courses taught by really great experts, produced professionally. You see the transcript there, which makes it really easy to find what you want to learn and jump right to that. They divide each course up into many chapters, so it's easy. You can watch on your iPhone, your iPad. You can watch on your desktop. Some of the courses I, I've been looking at uh, lately, Growth Hacking Fundamentals. That's fascinating. Growth Hacking, that's the new thing. Getting Things Done, David Allen, actually. The guy who invented GTD. Creative Quick Tips Series, Justin Seeley gives you weekly five-minute tutorials. These are fun because maybe you don't have a lot of time. You want to improve your creative skills in Photoshop or Illustrator or WordPress. Justin's got these great tips, and they're fast and easy. Learn how to become a development whiz or just for a hobby. I, you know, I, I do for a hobby. But if you, for instance, you want to get into podcasting or music production, they've got a great music production series. Invest in yourself. Sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash triangulation. With your membership, you get unlimited access to every course on Lynda, including access on iOS and Android devices, new courses every week. lynda.com slash triangulation. 10 days free. You get the run of the place. Soft business skills, uh, things like negotiation. I love GTD, and to be able to learn it from Dave Allen. David Allen is amazing. Linda, L-Y, or Photoshop from Burt Monroy, for that matter. L-Y-N-D-A.com. Our guest, Ryan Hoover, on triangulation. Young guy, has a tiger by the tail. It's called Product Hunt, and if you haven't yet become hooked, you will. <laughs> if you go there... Uh, as I said, you, when you meet the, you have a great, this, the other thing that's great about this is viral because your users are your best promoters. You don't need to advertise. Yeah. We've not done any advertising. I don't see us doing any for a oh. while, just the nature of, of product. And it, it is a community. So it's one of those things that doesn't lend itself to that kind of model. Yeah. At least but, not right now. But everybody who's, uh, who is a product, hunt, do you have a term for them? Product hunters? Uh, that's kind of what we've been using. I don't know if I like it or not. What yeah. do you think? Uh, does, it, does it seem sounds too like the great impressive? white hunter? Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know. Well, think about that. I bet your yeah. community could come up with something. Do the yeah. collections come from your editorial team, or does the community do that? A combination of both, actually. So sometimes we curate these collections, and then more recently, I think three or four months ago, we released the ability for anyone to create a collection. And so you'll see uh, in some of these, you'll see people highlighted as the curators of these right. different collections. And um, they're I, just taking I, products that are on Product Hunt. And, and the thing that's interesting, so for instance, you, you, it really, this is music from 2014. See, that's not what I would normally think of as Product Hunt, but it's a collection of great songs from 2014. But that's what I'm looking for is recommendations, curation. It's a curation engine. Ah, I'm starting to see this now. The, uh, yeah. the platform here, huh? And the music, the music is actually unusual for us. It's an experiment that we launched oh, earlier today, just curating music from different industry professionals. So... I think that's great. Yeah, you, you can just keep scrolling down. We have dozens and dozens of collections, and um, some of them are are really more serious, like helping hands, like products that help people uh, with disabilities. Others are See. ridiculous things, like emoji apps, which is <laughs> always kind of <laughs> no, fun to play with. But I bet that's number one. I bet that's one it, of the most popular categories. It's one of the more popular ones. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course. it's fun. I want to click on that. <laughs> I'm looking for that. No, but for your Valentine, make Valentine's Day special with delightful products for Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, so there's it's some good ones in there. Yeah. yeah, avocado. I use avocado. Love it. Uh, stayed up all night. A retro way, way to share mixtapes online. 
Fresh chocolate chip cookies delivered in 20 minutes or less. Uh, this is an app for falling in love. Invisible girlfriend. Pillow. Yeah, if, you, Wait a if you're single, there you go. Invisible girlfriend. What is this? It makes, it gives <laughs> believable it's... social proof. Have text conversations, share photos, and tell a believable story about your invisible girlfriend. No. <laughs> We are in amazing times, are we not? Yes, I know. <laughs> Innovation. Do you sometimes look at the products on Product Hunt and go, I can't believe it? I, like uh, that yes. one? Yes, yes. I mean, there, there's a number of... It, that's part of why I like Product Hunt is the diversity. You see yeah. You see the more serious, bigger name products emerge on here, but you also see the really obscure, weird things. Yep. And um, some of it's just funny. Some of it's actually inspires some thought and some creativity. When you started doing this, how did you, I mean, do you have, are you a natural maven? I guess maven is the term uh, that's, uh, that, that's used for, for somebody who is a thought leader who collects ideas. And uh, it was Malcolm Gladwell who used this term. And uh, I don't know if it's outliers, but are you a maven? Did you just kind of already be doing this in your life? Uh, to an extent, yeah. I mean, Product Hunt is uh, going back to what I said earlier. Is that it, it, I like talking about products. I like sharing. Cool you just new always technology have done that. People always done it. Always consume and watch shows like Tech TV back in the day. Screensavers have always played with new tech. Um, so I've kind of been doing this to an extent already. And I also previously, and I still do, write more about technology and that kind of thing. So um, there's kind of elements of that conversation with makers. Yeah, that, but you could I, have gone, you could have gotten a job, you know, at Engadget instead of doing this. And I think that that's very interesting that you chose to do something that's much more community driven. Uh, when you were starting, when you're doing the email list, surely you ran out of products. Did you have, or did, did, did people start sending them to you immediately or? Yeah. So it started off as it was, it was actually community. Well, it was a very small group of people, but right. these were people I knew uh, a lot of, entrepreneurs, investors, and others, uh, those are the people that I invited in the beginning. And I said, if you find cool products, submit them to this list, and every day it will just email us new stuff. So it actually wasn't me curating even from oh, the very interesting. beginning. Oh, interesting. It was, it was a true mailing list. It wasn't, your, it wasn't you. Exactly, ah, yes. Ah, yeah. okay. So, and then adding the votes really makes a difference because uh, a bunch of products is overwhelming. But as people vote, for instance, I'm looking at the collection called GTD. We were just talking about getting things done. And this yeah. is something that geeks love, you know, to-do list tools. And there are a lot of them. There's so many of them that it's a little bit uh, intimidating. So by having the voting system, you can really look at what people have said. Oh, this one's a good one. And, and Taco is like head and shoulders. I never even heard of it. Taco app above the others. So that's really valuable, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you have... Did you? Do you find that, for instance, my I have to admit, my first reaction when I heard about Product Hunt is, well, why would I want that? I I'm overwhelmed by all these products anyway. But as you you as you get to used to using it, pretty it's addictive. You pretty much every day you go and what's new, what's new? Yeah, we're trying to find the right balance because if we could, we actually get a lot of submissions every single day about yeah. over two hundred or so, and not all of them hit the home page just because it's just too overwhelming. Even if they're all amazing, it's just right. too much. So we're trying to find the right balance. That's one of the reasons why people love the email because they get it every day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific yeah, time yeah. and it only shows 10 products that yesterday were most upvoted. So it's kind of a really easy, quick way to, to get caught up. Are you surprised that there aren't 100 competitors in this space? It, doing what we're doing? Yeah. We've had a lot of Product Hunt for X communities emerge. So yeah. we've seen Product Hunt for like health foods. We've ah, seen Product Hunt for articles. Um, so there are niches, many different types of categories. Interesting. Yeah, um, there's a lot of similar types of things emerging. I mean, and most of them don't succeed. Uh, they build the product; it works functionally. But to really succeed, you need to build a community around it. And um, I think a lot of people just don't realize the the value, and that's that's what makes product work is the people that use it in the community itself. Yeah, that's something you uh, learn in uh, in uh, podcasting immediately. Mm -hmm. Without a community, you got nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I suppose that's true really of every product too. As a product has to develop a community. But yeah, especially something like this where, where you rely on user interaction. You need participation to make this work. Yeah, and it's, it's part of the scary part too. Like in the morning, we don't know what's going to be on Product Hunt. Like maybe we know one or two products that might emerge. But otherwise, 
I wake up in the morning, I turn over, I look at my phone, and I get always slightly nervous just to yeah. figure out, okay, what's on there? I don't really know what happened no, in the past the, like five hours. <laughs> I, I, I am so aware that any day now, people could just stop listening. And that's it. Yeah. We go home. Yeah. <laughs> There's well, nothing honestly, more to do. <laughs> during the holidays, right before we launched Product Hunt, me and Nathan were like, all right, holidays are coming up. People aren't really launching products, not really going online as much. We were actually worried that people would forget and not come back at all. Right. And traffic was lower and I was kind of like a little bit uh, nervous and they came back, fortunately. <laughs> which holiday? Was this a year ago holidays or? This was, yes, uh, 2013, like Christmas time frame was yeah. right after we launched. And uh, if you look at the growth, has it been pretty steady or? Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, I should know these numbers off the top of my head, but like since the beginning of this year, we've grown well over 10x um, in terms of wow. uh, monthly visitors. Our email list has significantly grown as well, which is which is great because that is this kind of stickiness factor in many ways. Um, right. People become habitually, uh, is part, becomes part of their morning routine in many ways. That's the key, boy. If you can become somebody part of somebody's morning routine, you are you are magic. You're done. That's why coffee is a is a good business to get into. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, yeah. you you have a coffee hunt in collection. You do. We I do. know. This is. <laughs> I'm immediately drawn to this. Hmm. Blue bottle mocha pot. Hmm. Hmm. You're a Phil's guy. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I go there every morning. That's that's actually where Product Hunt started was the email list was when I was at Phil's at like 6.30 or 7 a.m. Um, <laughs> that's great. Over at the one in Golden Gate Avenue. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Someday, Ryan, there will be a plaque. <laughs> this is where Ryan Hoover sat when he created Product Hunt, which is now the largest company in the world. Do you dream, of, do you dream sometimes like that? We have ambitions and we have a... I mean, we there, where we can take product hunt. There's there's very um, there's a big opportunity, and it's not just in technology. Like if if you imagine product hunt is just focusing on the technology space, that could be a really good business. But for us, longer term, we have ambitions to go to different verticals, and and that I like it. Like in the, in the words of Little Wayne, there's no ceilings um, with where we could go. And I know that's like the cheesiest thing I can say, but that's <laughs> I'm gonna say it. No, you gotta you gotta believe, man. You gotta believe. Yeah. Okay, a few yeah. more a few more minutes with uh, Ryan Hoover. A few more chances for you to ask your questions, please. Uh, ask away in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. Our show today brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can grow and protect your wealth. You don't have to be a Ryan Hoover. You could just you could just be just starting out. This is the time. In fact, the younger you are, the better. Go to personalcapital.com slash triangulation and start start checking in on your finances. Not just your charge cards and your checkbook, but your investments. Start putting a little bit away, your 401k or your IRA. Make sure that fees and uh, commissions are not slicing away years off your retirement. The younger you start, the better. And if you've got money to invest for a limited time when you open a new personal capital account, they're going to give you $100 for every $100,000 you deposit. Up to $10,000. It's a win-win. You get cash in your account and personalized investment advice from their registered investment advisors. Schedule your free one-on-one -on -one investment consultation today. This is a limited time offer, so quickly get in there. It's a new year, time to start investing smarter. Personal Capital's financial app, which, by the way, is on iOS and Android, and even Android Wear, will let you monitor your income, your spending, the performance of your investments in real time on a simple, easy-to-read screen on your tablet, on your mobile device, and, of course, on your uh, desktop. It's it's simple. Just take a few minutes to set up your account. Absolutely free to do that. Absolutely free to do that. Personal capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better financial decisions and manage your portfolio like a pro. I know you're spending all your energies creating, learning, growing, having fun. Just a minute. Just spend a minute setting up a personal capital account so that your money can grow along with you. Personal capital dot com slash triangulation go to personal capital now set up that free account and for a limited time if you qualify personal capital will give you a hundred bucks for every hundred thousand you deposit up to ten thousand dollars you don't have to deposit money by the way but if you decide to there's the uh, there's the advantage personal capital dot com slash triangulation love it ryan hoover mr product hunt is with us 28 years old his company is uh has already raised seven million dollars for ProductHunt.com. It is in a, and I think because it's addictive, it, uh, anything that's addictive, I would invest money in because 
if once you get people every morning as a habit, you got them for life. You've done a great job with this. I mean, it's, that's part of, we need people to keep coming back and right. retain. And I actually, uh, I, I look up to Nirial, who um, I followed his blog for a long time, like several years ago, and read his writing. He writes a lot about behavior change and habits. Mm -hmm. And um, after I connected with him, I helped him uh, write his book, uh, Hooked. How to really? Build Habit products. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So, oh, that's yeah. great. So, so you're very aware of that, that notion. Yeah, yeah. He's much more uh, knowledgeable on it than I am, but I've learned a lot from him in building products, technology products, and how it uh, influences behavior and, and things like that. So a lot of what I learned from him, you know, has directly been applied to product hunt. That's interesting. I always feel like, as, as in gaming anyway, that uh, it, there's a huge advantage to understanding psychology. Um, Absolutely. But actually, now that I think about it, anything, any app, um, the psychology of, of rewards and of, uh, of habituation and stuff. So tell I don't want you to like reveal the secret sauce or anything, but tell me a little bit about your thinking around Product Hunt to make it more sticky. Yeah, we, we kind of touched on some of it. I mean, part of it is what is the trigger that brings people to the site? And so there are kind of internal triggers and then there are external triggers. The the core internal trigger on Product Hunt for many people is I, I'm it's almost like this FOMO effect. I want to know what's new, what's hot, what right. are people talking about. Um, there's also another internal trigger of I need a product that does X or I need a solution for X. And so that's why a lot of people visit and they use search to find cool products or things that they're, they're looking for. Um, but then there are also the external triggers like the email that comes every single day to subscribers. That reminds people that we ah, exist, that this right. stuff uh, is out there. A little push and as well as a little, little pull, push. yeah. You need, you need, I think a lot of people are almost scared to spam their users, uh, maybe maybe too much so. And there are people that are certainly bad at this and they, they abuse email and push notifications. But without reminding people you exist, even if your product is awesome, I think just a lot of people just don't remember to come back. And I think people need to be maybe more aggressive with that. Glenn, make a note of that. That's something we don't do. We should be pushing a little bit. Just a little. Just a little. I mean, provide value, of course, in that, yeah. those notifications. But, you know, it's people am, want to be reminded. I am, I have this, and it's a bad, I know it's a bad thing. It's a weakness. But I have such an aversion to marketing of any kind. That, <laughs> Glenn's laughing, our, our marketing director. Yeah, I, I hate it. I don't want to market. I, uh, but, uh, so, you obviously are, uh, how, tell, help me. Help me. I, I've read Nier's book, but help me. Oh, you have. Awesome. Yeah. Well, How do I get people what? hooked on Twit? Well, you have, you have the iTunes subscriptions and other yeah. subscriptions. Yeah, so like you get it every... Sure. Yeah, you get it automatically, yeah. So you get that... Um, yeah. I don't know. We, we should brainstorm some. Yeah. Do you have a newsletter right now? No, I don't. I, I See, I don't want to be spammy. Yeah. Well, I don't think of it as spam. Like marketing no, and not. sales and everything has like a negative connotation when in reality it's more about if you can put yourself in the shoes of like the consumer, what what information would you want to receive? And how can you provide value right. that also brings them back to your site or right. to your service? And yeah. you see you see a great response from your daily. Well, you started as a daily email. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. open rates and click-through rates that are two to three X like industry average wow. and it sustains. So. Wow. So giving va it's giving value, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody in the chat room, uh, RF2020 says, when you push something, there needs to be some kind of instant utility. It can't just be noise. It has to be valuable. You, that's what you said. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I, I wish companies would stop doing, stop sending me uh, Merry Christmas and Happy yeah. New Year emails that provide no value. Don't want it. It's only an excuse for me, like a reason for me to unsubscribe. Like, I still don't get why people do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably why I don't want to do it because I'm afraid of that reaction. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to annoy you in any way. I just want to sit here quietly and hope you find <laughs> me. This is why we'll never be as successful as you are. I. I just. I think you've made such a great uh, tool, and I encourage everybody to try it and play with it. It's very fun, um, and and I. I will watch with interest because as you we talked about at the very beginning, I as soon as I look at it, I. I you know having having hung out with Kevin Rose during the ups and downs, the highs and lows of Dig, and the gaming that was going on and how difficult it was in the long run for Dig mm -hmm. to surmount. Uh, you know, community is great. Community is everything. Until it gets to us, it, it feels like there's a certain size 
that you go beyond that, or maybe you just start getting the wrong kind of people in the community, but mm -hmm. it can it can implode. It can be you can be like a supernova, and you and you just and then you implode right back into a black hole. And I yeah. and I th I think I've seen that happen enough times. There's there there are there have to be some good rules about how community works and how to. Are you thinking about that a lot? I bet you are. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I I watch. I, I was a dig user, and I watched that um, yeah. explode and, and how that happened. And yeah. um, you know, it's something that we're very aware of, and we will either uh, succeed or fail based on the community. Ultimately, it's yeah. not going to be a technical challenge that that we succeed or fail. It's going to be the people that use it. Um, well, that's the psychology, so though, isn't it? I mean, that's where psychology comes in, and encouraging yeah. the right behaviors, and and. Uh, and, and rewarding the right behaviors and discouraging the behaviors you don't want to have. Mm -hmm. And also we're, we're focusing internally on the team, I think more so than other companies and finding the right community leaders, the people that uh, understand psychology and people smart. that can build out these communities. Smart. So. Now everybody in the chat room is distracted about having me do sending some stuff to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is an API if you want to create your own product hunt tool. There's some really cool stuff out there. I think, frankly, that's I, I know that, that was you were reluctant and you were nervous. That's the single mm -hmm. smartest thing you could do. I just feel yeah. like that because you see it again and again with the really successful uh, places like Twitter. They didn't know what Twitter was. The, it was the community that told them. That, that informed mm -hmm. them, that made Twitter what it is. If you let the community lead you into something that they really want, and an API is a great way to do that, um, mm -hmm. who knows? It could be anything. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Ryan, it was so good to talk to you. Thank you uh, for doing Product Hunt. Good luck to you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and keep up the good work. It's really, uh, it's, it's inspiring and exciting. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And right before we started recording, I just got to mention it one more time. I, I've been watching you on Twit and at Tech TV back in the day for several years. So um, I, I was telling the team, like, someday I'm going to get on Twit. I'm, I don't know how, but this is going to happen. Oh, my <laughs> and, God. Well, you should awesome have just... <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> We're yeah, thrilled to yeah. have you. If I had <laughs> only you. known. If anybody's watching at home and saying, gosh, how do I get on Twit? Just send me an email. <laughs> yeah. No need Maybe to... Maybe I should have just done that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're really glad... Uh, to, 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 I'm glad to meet you. Come up sometime and, and visit. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, yeah. I'll, be, uh, I'll be watching the radio show, too, uh, the Product Hunt Radio on uh, the Product Hunt blog. Thank you, Ryan. Cool. Yeah. Thanks Take care. Bye-bye. ProductHunt.com. Uh, we talk uh, to great people like Ryan every Monday. It's such a great way to start your week. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC if you want to watch live. And live is good because then I can see, oh, you know, I missed Jeff. I missed your question. Jeff wanted me to ask Ryan what his favorite product ever was. See, I, you can't ask somebody a question like that. That's too hard. Favorite product. It's like asking what's your favorite child. Uh, <laughs> if you want to participate, though, like Jeff and, and all the other questioners, it's easy. IRC.twit.tv during our live show. But if you can't watch live, don't worry. On-demand uh, versions of the show will always be made available at twit.tv slash TRI, youtube.com slash triangulation, or... I'm thinking now, subscribe, and then you'll get it every week automatically. You can find lots of places to do it. It's absolutely free. Or get our great Twit apps. We didn't do them, but we uh, we have some wonderful developers who have on iOS, Android, Windows, phone, even Roku, so you can watch anytime. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Triangulation. Bye-bye.